This video is to help you with your chromatic scale. The first place you're going to go to help you with this is your Rhythm Master book. If you do not have your Rhythm Master book, you can do your note flight assignment um, seven and follow along with that. In all of your books, at the beginning of your book um, is a fingering chart. So we're going to use this to help us with our chromatic scale. So if you can have this with you and be following along, this is going to help you tremendously with your scale. So when I play the chromatic scale on the piano, I'm not going to skip any notes. I'm going to go from black to white, or if there's two white ones together, I'm going to go from white to white. I do not skip any notes. So this is what it looks like on the piano. If I start on B, this is B flat. skipping any notes. So I'm going from black to white without missing any. And that's our chromatic scale. It's made of 13 notes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's my 13 notes. On your instrument, you can't see these notes. You're playing them, but you're not able to see them like you can on the piano. So sometimes it's a little easier to see it on the piano. But you can play, you're playing these exact same notes on your instrument. Some of you may be wondering why there's two notes and they sound the same and they're both in the same measure in our fingering chart. So let me show you what those are on the piano. Okay, they're called inharmonic notes. They're notes that have the same name, different name, but have the same sound. So I'm gonna show you this using a percussion, a percussion fingering chart, okay? So if you notice, all of the notes down here in the bottom, it's gonna be the same with my piano in just a minute. All of these notes are natural notes, okay? These are the, these are the notes from our musical alphabet. Remember, we have seven uh, notes in our musical alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And they repeat. So if I go all the way down here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, a, B, C, and then I could keep going if my keyboard was long enough. And if I'm going down my keyboard and getting lower, I would go backwards in my alphabet. G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, and then I, the next one would be F. So if you're playing the piano, you're going to have more note options. Up here are our sharps and flats. Okay. So when we put a sharp on a note, we're making, we're raising the pitch half a step. So let's go to a C. So I have a C. If I want to play a C sharp, I'm going to go up a half step to C sharp. If I'm on D and I want to make it sharp, I go up to D and it's a half step. So these notes up here are sharps and flats. Now, if I want to put a flat, that means I'm going to lower the note by half a step. So let's start on our E. If I want an E flat, I'm going to go down a half step. D, down a half step. Now they have the same note on them because they are the same note. They just have two names. Like you have a first name and you might have a middle name. You're the same person, but you have two different names. So this note on the piano or the keyboard on your instrument can be called a D flat or a C sharp. Now composers, they have two choices. When they're writing music, they can write it as a D flat or they can write it as a C sharp, but they're the same note. On your instrument, they will be the same note. So when you look in your fingering chart, you're gonna see these two notes in the same measure. They're gonna have the same fingerings, but they're gonna have two different notes like this. On the keyboard, this is what it looks like on the keyboard, okay? So we have all the white notes down here are natural. So this is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. This is all our natural notes. The black notes up here, these are our sharps and flats. Okay, so if I want, this is A. If I want to make it sharp, A sharp's right here. If I want to make, play A flat, I'm going to go down. This is my um, G. If I want to play a G sharp, I go up. 
I want to play G flat, I go down. Okay, so that's how the notes work in our fingering chart, in case you were getting a little bit confused by the sharps and the flats. Okay, we're going to bop our notes. Remember, we're going to say sharps on the way up and flats on the way down. Ready? One, two, ready, and go. C. C sharp. D. D sharp. E. F. F sharp. G. G sharp. A. A sharp. B. C. Repeat. C. And back down. B. B flat. A. A flat. G, G flat, F, E, E flat, D, D flat, C, and stop. Now we're going to bop the notes, but we're also going to press our buttons as we bop the notes. So I want you to do this with me with your instrument in your hands. We're going to say the note names and press the buttons. Ready? Starting right here. One, two, ready, and go. C. C sharp. D. D sharp. E. Okay, guys, now we're going to play our scale in whole notes. Okay, make sure that you're using lots of air, supporting, filling up your horn. <clears throat> One, two, ready. <laughs>
and that's your chromatic scale. Now, if you're not ready to play it the way I did without stopping, you can always go back and play one note, rest for four, then the next note, rest for four, next note, rest for four. You can also slow the metronome down. My metronome is at 80, but if you need to go slower, you're welcome to slow your metronome down. I hope this video helped you guys out. Um, I know this can be a little bit confusing doing the chromatic scale, but it's a super useful scale because it teaches you all the notes on your instrument and it introduces sharps and flats and naturals to you. If you've mastered your um, chromatic scale and you can play it perfectly, um, go ahead and start playing it in half notes and then in quarter notes. And also an extra challenge if you're up for it, in your Rhythm Master book, it's written out for you. So if you go to page 40, 31, actually page 31 in your book, and you'll see right here it says B flat concert chromatic scale. And now it's written out in quarter notes for you. And you can practice reading them from the book. In the percussion book, it's on page 61. So it's right here. So if you want to challenge yourself to play it without looking at your fingering chart, you can do that. But if you need to look at your fingering chart, that is completely fine right now. Okay, I hope this video helps and I look forward to hearing you play.